Hello everybody, this is Brad Dyke reaching out to you. Uh, today we're going to talk about some pre-data center work that I need to do to get things ready in regards to preparing to rebuild my home lab data center. And again, I remind everybody that a, a data center style lab is basically where you can do three, two to three sets of servers, not each set representing between three to five servers each working in conjunction so that they provide you an enterprise platform type of solution. So most people have a home labs with have four or five servers in the maximum, including one of them being a storage server and so on and so on. Uh, and that that reached the golden requirements that they needed for their specific needs. A data center actually does a lot more. So anyways, uh, let me show you what I've got here. So basically, I have here, as you can see, a storage array, and it is basically empty right now, but it's filled full of these basically 2.5 inch caddy drivers. I've done videos on this particular chassis, but I'll put the specs in it again. Right now, as you can see, it's just a standalone chassis. It's actually surprisingly one of the lowest power output chassis I have found. Because you've got to remember, when you do SSD drives, you, they kind of pull more power. They pull more power than standard hard drives do. So, because of their nature. But with that being said, down here I have 13 one terabyte drives. Plus I have some additional SSD drives down here. But this is basically one terabyte stack right here of all the same make and model. And as you can see, it is basically the one terabyte variation from the Teams group drive. I actually found this environment to be surprisingly successful when it came to doing the workloads that I want to do. Um, you know, they're not great, but they're not bad. And you don't need to have the absolute best, except for maybe your primary boot machine for your own desires. So down here, as you can see, I have a powerhouse 910. This is a quad array solution. And it has a lot of disks, as you can see here, but it's only baseline with some principal disks because I'm only using it for my core database model. And I want to look at subjugating some additional high performance capacity to match that. So with that being said, um, what we have here that we're going to be doing here is we're going to be taking these caddy sets like you see here. And they have the SSD buttress connector here. And the end result is that they will look like this. Now this is a toolless kit. It's also very nice about it. I'm using the EMC series 24 drive disk array solution, which is a SAS disk array solution. And there is a limitation about these devices uh, on the principles of their controllers. So as I've told you before, when you start using SSD disks and, or NVMe disks and so on, the bottleneck will be your controller, not necessarily your bus of your disk array solution. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this video to go ahead and do some pre-mounting and get disks in there for you to see. Okay, as we're beginning the process, here is an SSD 1 terabyte drive being set up in regards to its configuration, connector edge, and so on. As you can see there, there is a proprietary edge connector there, but a standard SATA and power out connection here. So this will actually set inside the caddy, and this is a toolless caddy because it's pretty neat. If you look, it actually just expands out and then collapses back down. So that's something that's really interesting. It does make installing pretty quick. <laughs> okay, so as we're going through this and we're installing these drives into the system, you've noticed that I have not channel distributed between the three channels on the bus. In the past, I will say that I have told everyone that when you're building out your disk arrays, you want to channel them through their buses to get the maximum throughput of your SAS interface. Now, the thing that is a problem here is we're not dealing with spinning hard disks. We're dealing with SSD drives, which have a really high I.O. throughput. And because of that, I think literally trying to break them out across the buses is not going to work like you would with the spinning hard drive disk footprint. I'll know that because actually I have 
spinning hard disks that I will put into split channeling later and do a comparison test with that against crossing you know one group of disks in a single channel to find out if the bandwidth is going to show what I know and that's going to be basically telling me two things one unless I've got an LSI 3200 series uh, HBA controller uh, everything else younger than that let's say like a 2900 series or something like that it's going to be the bottleneck not these drives and the channels will just basically fill up and or time out with wait states so that it can allow the read and write cycles to happen in the correct format. Now, SAS does give you the ability of both writing and reading, unlike SATA. But at the same point in time, you know, when you're dealing with SSD drives, they don't qualify as SATA or SAS because they're actually their own class of, of their own. So right now I've got five of the 13 in. And I'm going to go ahead and cross this channel and it will stop about here. Uh, and at that point stage, I also have um, some SP Series 1 terabyte A55s as well. And I'm going to put them out on a separate channel like this. And the goal is with the separation of the channels, because here's the breaker right here. And I have another one sitting right here. I can do a test between these two versus these five or these two. So I can build a small pair group here on the same channel and then I can build this one on each channel. So you can really do a lot of testing to find out what your IOPS are going to look like going forward. This is a great example of really tr truly getting at the genuine bandwidth you're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and continue put drives in. Okay, so something interesting here I thought I saw and I thought this is good. I want to show this to you is that as you've noticed here, this is an, a metal housing bracket. And um, in the metal housing bracket, as you put it in, the one key thing about obviously having metal in your array is that it generates and becomes what we call capacitance. And that capacitance is basically the ability to store heat. But then one of these was I found inside in my unit, and it's all plastic. It's a little bit more fickled in regards to handling um, the drive and getting it to fit correctly, but it's plastic and plastic doesn't hold heat anywhere near as much as straight metal does. And so with that being said, the principal level of heat is repelled out to the back of the storage disc array. So I would have liked to have all of these to be plastic, but at the same point in time, they are fickle. They're not as easily adjustable as the all metal bracket versions because these are more rigid. They have more strength to them. But I just wanted to note that to, you know, understand that when you have disc arrays and you see a plastic housing set inside it, that's not necessarily a cheap deal. That's actually, they're just trying to deal with the thermal levels and that they want you to be able to keep that heat moving on opposed to being stored as, a, as a, like a battery, it stores electricity, but all metal including my rack here, stores heat. So this is just a side note. Okay, so now we've got the 13 class drives right here. I have two unspecified one terabyte drives here. I have two open slots and I have multiple slots over here. Now I'm going to put in here a 512 and a two terabyte drive as well so that the entire bus is SSD. And then over here, I'm going to have basically the residual spinning hard disks, which are these disks down here. These are one terabyte SATA disks. You know, they, they do not have good uh, rapport, you know, 5300 series bandwidth loops on RPMs. And, you know, outside of this one disk here, this is a 10,300 uh, gig test drive, I believe. And these are basically are the, the I guess you would say the sandbag of the sandbox test that we're going to be doing. Uh, these are 19 inch full HP Enterprise style 10,000 RPM drives that I have here. And then of course I have these standard 7200s which are very typical but they, they do function and so why not? Great test bed. So I'll be putting those into this side on this one bus. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this off and put this in. And so the goal here is these two one terabyte drives are just that. They're one terabyte drives. Now, 
This is a two terabyte SSD drive and it will be the standalone test bed. And for now, I'm just gonna leave it out. I've just popped it so it will stay, but it's not in. As you can see, it's just kind of floating there. And I'll do the same with the spinning disks as well. Okay, so now we are at a point where we can now begin the test. We've got the 13 set. We've got the, one ter the two terabyte one right here is a separator. We have the two uh, separated one, uh, one terabyte drives that are SSD as well. So from here over to here is all SSD one terabyte or higher. This is a single 512 SSD. And then these are all spinning disks. And then these are all disconnected as well. They're just sitting out there on the sideline. Uh, just to fill the, the whole space up because you do want to fully populate the bay so that the airflow is correctly driving heat through as it needs to. Uh, that's very important because um, in this environment, airflow is what keeps things regulated. And the worst enemy to SSDs is heat. Remember that. Very important. That's why you have a small HVAC designed to keep you around the 70, 69 degree area. And it will do the job. Now, this guy... He is going to be replacing the NetApp array uh, for our, what we call the um, new uh, TrueNAS platform. This is my old TrueNAS platform down here, which is all 3.5 inch drives, but that's just too much. I mean, it's just, it gets incredibly hot. I can only run it for a few hours at a time, but it's my ultimate backup device. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to retire this shelf array. Uh, and move it out and then I'm gonna put this guy here and then I'm gonna mount these discs in experimental format so to test them out and we'll see how that goes going forward one last tiny little detail to add to the equation is you see these little boxes here and they have a little housing inside them and they all come this way it doesn't matter who makes them they're just really good little boxes for using to you know secure your um, 2.5 inch discs, uh, even if you didn't want the cardboard fitters, the insides themselves are worth keeping because when you look at them, they're basically really good protection and they, they stack easy. They're just overall really good organizers and it's important to have good organization because inevitably your lab can be junked up pretty badly before you know it. So with that being the case, and I'm just sitting here putting everything back together, um, we will have the config and the setup in such a way so that it will hopefully snap in there and um, that pretty much is going to be our test bed for the pre the pre data center migration so with that being said I'm going to be signing off here and I'm wanting you guys to uh, get excited like I am about doing this rebuild I've got about two thousand three hundred two thousand three thousand dollars invested in this significant upgrade uh, and I'm retiring a lot of equipment that needs to even though it's been great to work with the old uh, Isilons and my TrueNAS chassis uh, powerful boxes great space but too big too much power uh, too much of everything for them to be functional when I have to do multiple platforms at once you only have so much power you only have so much cooling power and so on and so on so that all adds up over time so with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off for this pre-prep pre uh, for our transition of our old data center into a new data center. And hopefully everybody will have fun enjoying watching me struggle this big battle and try to get this all done. Uh, God bless and keep having fun.